Well, if I'm here today and you're here today, then it must be Countdown Day once again. And this one is perhaps going to be the most visual countdown that we've ever done. Why? Because we're going to be looking at the top 10 wildest and wackiest Transformers color schemes in the latest GotBot Countdown. Hey, one, hey, all, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, your most humble of hosts, and kind of excited to host today, Dennis Moulton, a.k.a. Gotbot. As always, please like, comment, share, of course, subscribe, and while you're at it, light them up, baby. And hit that notification bell, please. Helps me out a ton. It lets you know when content of all sorts goes up here on the channel. Check out Machinery of Man, the Everything Factor, Transformers Collectors, NL, the Autobot Family, Transformers vs. G.I. Joe vs. DC Universe vs. Marvel, and all of my links to my social media, all of those things are in the description below. If you're in a position to help the channel, you can use the donate link. You can check us out on Patreon. You can see what we offer to you through Teespring, or of course you can hit the join button right here on YouTube and become a channel member. And yes, indeed, this is going to be the top 10 wildest and wackiest color schemes as voted on by the fans. Hundreds of votes cast as per usual. They were all tallied. They're all being put together here. Now, normally I like to have a plastic representation of the characters on these countdowns, but I only have a couple of the characters here. And since this is such a visual countdown, I am actually going to, for those that I don't have, I'm actually going to, I'll throw in an image or two of the characters that I don't have so that you can see exactly what the color scheme looks like for yourself as we discuss this going through. Uh, there were votes that were cast for everyone from Lyle Kaiser to Wheelie, uh, from uh, hooligan to space case to tidal wave to uh, a bunch of the Beast Wars Transmetals characters, but none of them actually made the honorable mentions or the list. The honorable mentions this time around are six. Why? Because the first four I'm going to mention had the exact same number of votes. So in the honorable mentions, first we have Devastator, G1 Devastator with his irradiated green and purple color scheme, I guess we'll call it. I don't really know what to call it, but he uh, had enough to make it into the honorable mentions. Tied with him was the gloriously pink or fuchsia, if you will, uh, Misfire, as well as King Poseidon or Piranicon with his pink, teal, and lighter pink, especially in contrast to the black face of the combined mode. Now, a lot of people said C-Cons. I couldn't count C-Cons. I can't count a general group, but I could count uh, their combined mode, so that's what I did. And Optimal Optimus. And most people said, look, his uh, green eyes, his blasty orange, and his bright blue alone were enough to get him the votes that he got. As well, Besides for those all being tied, we had two more that made it into the honorable mentions. G2 Menasaur with his brilliant purple and teal, along with a splash of red and yellow along the way. And how could this guy not get some votes? I'm shocked he didn't actually make the top 10. G2 Megatron. What with his, again, like Devastator, uh, kind of irradiated green and purple motif. In fact, we just recently in the Selects line learned that the Earthrise mold is going to be recolored as G2 Megatron and kind of the glorious Ligotti in all of those bright colors, especially with that purple cannon. So that's our uh, honorable mentions and a few others that I just kind of peppered in there along the way. So who actually made the list? Well, we're going to kick things off, you know where I'm going, to number 10 first. So number 10 takes us to a character that I didn't really know until fairly recently, within the last year for sure. I wasn't into the comics as a kid. I certainly haven't been into the comics as an adult either. And the guy never appeared in any program, at least until recently. Who am I talking about? Impactor. And at first I kind of didn't get it, but you know what? I get it. I mean, we have an orange color scheme with yellow on top of it. If you look at the Netflix repaint, we kind of got this weird green that's going to have yellow on top of it, plus purple. If there's any way to be... Um, not inconspicuous. This guy has found it. I mean, he is, you're going to see him coming a mile away. And I guess for that reason, he takes the number 10 slot. Now, number nine is one that I don't have in hand, but I could not argue with it when it came up. It comes to us from Action Masters, and I bet you can probably guess. But in case you can't, here he is. 
That's right, it's that action master, Omega Spream. Not Supreme, Spream. By the way, when I told that to Starscream wife, she cracked up. Um, I don't know who had the bright idea of saying, hey, let's make an Omega Supreme for action masters. Let's, let's make his body orange and pink, and then we're gonna give him a blue head with a red visor. It's like they must have just taken whatever plastics they had kicking around and said, hey, we're just going to throw it in and made a prototype. And somebody said, oh my goodness, that prototype looks amazing. Let's do that. It's so gaudy. It's so 90s. It's so ugly. And that's why it takes the number nine slot. Now, number eight takes us to Beast Wars. Well, sort of. Takes us to one of the most beloved characters, although he didn't quite make the beloved countdown, as I recall. Nevertheless, he's somebody who is definitely an honorable character. It is the Fusor known as Silverbolt, but it's not quite the Beast Wars Silverbolt who made this list. No, it is the universe repaint of Silverbolt, really in this purple and greenish-yellow motif, very akin to Cindersore, if you know Cindersore. It's almost as if somebody said, hey, let's take Silverbolt, let's put Cindersore's colors on it, slap the universe label on it, and call it good. It's a great mold, and it's a great character. Why they did that, I don't know. If you're not familiar with that color scheme, well, here it is. I don't know, is that good? I don't think it's good. I, I like the wings. I like how it fades out on the wings, I guess. I guess. You know what, let's, let's just go on to number seven. Number seven is pretty simple. Thunder, thunder, thunder clash. Now, what on earth am I supposed to say about Thunderclash with his red pants and his I, I, white vest that has the bird on it and his blue jean jacket arms, you know, his gold face? There's like, there's so many colors in Thunderclash and there's so much going on that it's hard to know where to begin. It's like a visual onslaught. I don't know where to start. I really honestly don't know where to start with him. But that being said, I think that he's somebody who is so vastly overdue for an update that I would love to get those gaudy colors in some sort of an awesome modern take. Now number six is one of those epitome of the 90s color schemes with the wrecker known as Rotorstorm. Now I think it might be safe to say that Rotorstorm uh, got the votes that he did because he's on a lot of people's minds now where he's getting a release, but he is kind of gaudy. I mean, we have two shades of blue, which is fine, but then we have, like, the pink or fuchsia thrown in there that appears on his chest and, like, his helicopter blades. Again, you're going to see the guy coming a mile away. It is almost like they're trying to do neon without really being neon, and that's pretty gaudy, and for that reason, I guess he takes the number six slot. And here we are at the halfway mark, the number five slot. And the number five slot fittingly belongs to someone who, it's almost like they looked at a color wheel and said, hey, let's just take every single color and slap it together. And that gave us none other than this guy. That's right, Monstructor. And, like, I don't know. Like, there's teal and there's blue and there's red and there's yellow and then there's gold and then there's black and purple. Like, there's... Such a variety, so, like, you thought that Thunderclash was a visual onslaught, but there's so many colors here that it's hard to even call, call it a color scheme. It's like it just fell into a, a bucket of paint and then started to roll down a hill, but every roll had it roll into, like, new, a new color of paint, and at the bottom when it got there, he was just splattered with all these different splotchy colors giving absolutely no rhyme or reason and like it works because he looks really cool I guess for that reason he takes the number five slot now number four I actually do have a plastic representation of and honestly a lot of the description that I kind of muddled through there for Monstructor would apply to this guy as well it is none other than Abominus and Abominus is a mix of course the thing that's cohesive here if there's anything cohesive, would be like the light kind of grayish color, but the fuchsia pinks, the bright orangey yellows, and then two different types of like yellow, like yellow and then like butter. And then we have 
you know, a, a purple down here that kind of clashes with the fuchsia. The blue over here, there's nothing else that has blue in it. All of the purple, the, and I guess the dark blue, that makes a blot over here, like nothing has any of those colors. Even the purple down here isn't like the purple on blot. Um, yeah, you know what? This guy deserves the number four slot. And we're into the top three, and number three I don't think is going to be much of a surprise to people. Number three is, well, a version of Bruticus. That's right, it is G2 Bruticus. Now, some people said, hey, you could have used the Fall of Cybertron Bruticus, not the video game version, the plastic version, just the regular one, the one that a lot of people call Skittles Bruticus. Um, I, I, I guess... I suppose you could, you could, I guess. But the G2 one is, for something that's supposed to be camouflage and like blend in, it absolutely doesn't in any way, shape or form. It's like they said, okay, we'll be camouflage and we'll fit in. And then somebody looked at like Brawl and said, are we actually doing that? And Brawl was like, no man, we're not actually doing that. We wanna be loud, we wanna be heard, we wanna be loud and proud. We'll do camouflage, but we're gonna do it as conspicuously as possible so that everybody could see us coming and fear and quake in our wake. For that reason, he takes the number three slot. And number two, I actually, again, have a plastic representation of. What do you get when you mix like a fuchsia pink color, purple and teal? Well, you get this guy, Spinister. He comes in at the number two slot and you know what? I get it. Like, this is the one of those like quintessentially 90s, late 80s, early 90s uh, type of color schemes when things were bright and loud and boisterous and bold. But he makes it work and he even makes it look kind of sinister. You sort of, you know, would fear if you saw this guy and his two target masters coming at you. Um, yeah, it's definitely outlandish and it's definitely wild and it's definitely wacky. And for that reason, he takes the number two slot. But nobody came close to touching number one. Now, number one comes from G2. Number one is not a combiner who's a mishmash of colors. It's just a character, a robot. It's one that we know, it's one that we love, and it's one that baffles us to this day why he was ever given this color scheme. Some people know this color scheme from BotCon. Some people know this color scheme as G2. Some know it as Shattered Glass, and some know it as Action Master. But they're all technically the same guy. Who am I talking about? Well, this guy. <laughs> where, where, do I, where do I even begin with this guy? I mean, we have green peppered on his arms and on his feet and on his legs. We have red and I think the upper arms might be, sometimes they look red, sometimes they look pink. Then his... Uh, his null rays, like especially if we got the Botcon version, are three different colors. We got purple thrown in there. Then his thighs, for some reason, are like this baby blue. Then we get to his head, and his head is like a gold color that is like absolutely, positively nothing else. Here's the thing. When you see a mishmash of colors like that on a combiner, well, at least you could say maybe each of the individual characters has their own color scheme. It just doesn't come together well. But here... Thundercracker can't even get his body parts to match up. It's the most outlandish. It's the most gaudy. It's the most wacky, wild, and beautifully, gloriously ugly version of Thundercracker we've ever had. And for that reason, he takes the number one slot. And there you have it. Once again, we went from 10 to 1. And yeah, there were some real doozies on there. A lot of people said, oh, this is going to be a G2 fest. But as you guys know now, no, it actually was not a G2 fest. And it goes to show that there have been questionable color schemes right across the franchise from Beast Wars right up to, uh, you know, Shattered Glass. You know, everything in between. Things from more modern ages really didn't get more uh, many votes at all. Like nothing really stood out as 
super crazy from Cyberverse or Robots in Disguise 2015. Though I could point to some of the RID 2015 Viacons. Let me know what you think of the list. Let me know who you would have put on it or who you would have changed around. I'd love to hear from you guys. I appreciate you coming by. Give me some of your extremely valuable time. I do know how important it is to you. If you're in a position to help the channel to grow, don't forget that there's a donate link in the description. You can check us out on Patreon, see what we offer to you through Teespring, or of course, Hit the join button right here on YouTube while you're at it. Hit the subscribe button, stick around, have some fun with us. Don't forget, man, that somehow, some way, each and every single day, you do make a difference. And I look forward, baby, to the next time that you and I get together to have another visit, either in the live streams on Thursday nights at the stop motion premieres or the old-fashioned way, right here inside the videos.